Hey, how's everybody doing? This is Matt in the office and another edition of Beers and Beards with Matt. Uh, today, I am uh, going to go kind of no frills. I don't really have a lot to say uh, about life or anything like that. I'm not going to get all philosophical on people, so let's get right to the beer. That's what most people, I would assume, would want. So, today I am going to do a beer from way down under. Uh, not Australia, but I'm going to New Zealand this time. And this is actually the second beer from New Zealand that I uh, have had. I've had, as many other people, probably had the James Bogue uh, beer, which is pretty much a beer you can find almost anywhere. And now, this is a kind of a new up-and-coming brewery out of New Zealand. It's called uh, Moa, and this is their Imperial Stout, and it's the Imperial Stout that is aged in uh, Pinot Noir barrels. So, pretty interesting. I have, I have had this before, um, just a, a few sips of it, because a few weeks ago I had a... Uh, uh, beer tasting at my house, and this is one of the beers that I had put out for uh, some for stouts, and I actually got kind of not roped into buying it, but it was it came in like a four pack, and the actual art on the box is what kind of sold me. It's got this old timey boxer, looks like from the 1800s or something like that. So like a bare knuckle boxer, which I thought was pretty cool. Came in a four pack. Four pack was about um, 15, 16 bucks, so about four dollars a bottle. But this beer does pack a little bit of an oomph. It is over 10% in the ABV category. So, and I can't really tell you how I remember the beer when I was drinking it before, so this is going to be kind of a retasting, and that I'll actually talk about what I think of it. And of course it's corked, so you know it's got to be classy, of course. Let's see if I can... Uh... There we go. Popped off. Came right off. The head dump popped off. Mm, yeah. Very vinous on the first smell right out, uh, out of the bottle. Now, I, I was having to sit out for a little bit because it was pretty cold, so I got it up to a higher temperature mm, at this point, probably closer to about the 55 degree uh, area. So, didn't fill the glass all the way up, but it's got a pretty good head on there. Now, I'd say if if I poured it a little more uh, vigorous, it probably would have been a little bit more of a puffy head, but dissipates pretty quickly. You know, the high alcohol is going to do that. Uh, some pretty decent lacing on the glass as well. Very, very vinous, kind of, it's very dry smelling, very much probably like a peanut on the water. So, and it's funny I'm doing this because I was watching uh, Sideways the other day and he loves, you know, the main character, Paul Giamatti, Miles in the movie. He loves Pinot. You know, Pinot is the creme de la creme of old wine, and the grapes are very hard to mature. So, you know, this isn't wine and beards with mass, beers and beards with mass. So, without further ado, cheers to you all, and let's give this beer another shot. Well... Very bitter, pretty mouth puckering, very, very dry, and the alcohol is pretty well hidden underneath the dryness of the hopping and also of the barrel aging. So it definitely dries it out. So that's if it is hoppy, it's dry because I think it's more dry just because of the barrel aging and the bottle conditioning of it. So the alcohol doesn't really shine through. There is some slight sweetness that you're getting from both. I think. The barrel from the from the wine, but then also the alcohol is sweet sweetened up a little bit. Probably dry, the driest imperial stout I've ever had. There are some good malt notes on the very very back end, but the, for the most part, it's pretty mouth puckering puckeringly dry, a little funky, uh, a little tannic in it. Um, you know, you you could definitely taste the wood barrel aging on it. So, not not a not a bad beer. I, I've read like on Beer Advocate and some other beer reviews, this beer doesn't really have high have like a high. It's not highly regarded by a lot of beer drinkers, and I can understand why. It's not definitely not for everybody. I mean, I mean, I don't know how many beers are really being how many imperial stouts are being aged in Pinot Noir barrels as well. So I salute the, you know trying things out and trying something completely different out, something I've never had, something I haven't really seen before. I've seen a lot of different imperial stouts aged in bourbon barrels and other barrels, but not necessarily Pinot Noir. So you're, you're clashing the 
sweetness of an imperial stout what it usually is with the dryness of wine. So, pretty pretty interesting concept. And and then you know, ten point four percent definitely packs a little bit of wall. Up. It's kind of other things happening in life. I haven't really been paying a lot of attention to YouTube until probably maybe maybe a few days ago when I posted the baking video. I'm still trying to figure out this whole like monetizing your videos and stuff like that. So I don't know. I, I set up a few of my videos for monetization. I really don't know how it's going to go. Don't really care how it's going to go either. I'm not in, in this for money or trying to get as many hits, but it seems like Everybody was making a big deal about being a partner on YouTube. It started like, in, especially in the beer community, it's like you slowly but surely started seeing more and more people become partners. Uh, Chad was one of them who became a partner, and he expanded out. That was kind of like when I was watching his videos. I still do on occasion. I, I really don't watch a lot of anybody's videos at this point. I, I kind of go about my business on YouTube myself. Uh, but he made the whole thing about him becoming partner. I don't know how it really turned out for him. I'm sure he's done blogs about it and, and given his two cents about the whole community of people who are monetizing their videos and who are partners. Um, I like how YouTube's done all the analytics on it now too, that it gives you a month by month breakdown of how many views you're getting. And I'm surprised even with that inactivity, I'm getting in one month almost 3,000 views on my videos. I think it's just because some of my videos are maybe a little more mainstream, a little more popular than, because my beer reviews don't get shit for, <laughs> for, uh, for views. Some do, some don't. I think a lot of it has to do with definitely what you're, your, what you're uh, putting your channel as or what you're marking, uh, what you're putting the post as. Like if you put big boobs, people are going to search out big boobs. So, you know, I'm not that shysty or low down that I need to, you know, because, you know, people on YouTube are always putting like big tits or something. So, you know, Brad stole the partners. I'll see what happens. I'll give you an update on how it turns out. Maybe the, maybe the first month of monetizing the videos and seeing how it turns out. But there's too many rules too. Like, unless you have original content or you own the content, you're you you can't use it. Which I don't know if that has something to do with the Creative Commons. If somebody has some information about that for me and how better to monetize your videos, you know, give me a shoot me a comment or a message or something like that. And I'll learn more about it. So, sorry, got a little sidetracked. <laughs> we talking about beer, and then I was talking about monetization. Anyway, um, I'm gonna finish this off camera. There really isn't a lot much more to say about it. It's it's dry. It's semi sweet. It's got some chocolate notes to it. It's got some tannic notes to it. It's got the wine the wininess to it. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything. It's it's an interesting beer. Definitely not for everyone though. I mean, I wouldn't. You know, if you're a stout fan or even an imperial stout fan, I don't think this Moa would be the first one. I'd say, here, try this, please. So, um, for for merit alone, I definitely give it a thumbs up for trying something a little bit different, a little something interesting, kind of cool, kind of blending beer and wine together. Um, but as a beer that I would suggest to people, probably not, it's just not something that everybody's going to like, but you know, it's not the way beer is, but if you try it, you might like it, so, um, that's about it, that's the rambling, uh, of Matt for the, I guess, week or the next few days until I post another video, and thanks for tuning in, once again, this was the MOA Imperial Stout Age in Pinot Noir Barrels, and I will see everybody next time. So comment, resubscribe, uh, re or subscribe if you're brand new, and hopefully enjoy it. And I will see everybody later. So take it easy.